What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Good Friday evening. Finally Friday, right? A good, beautiful day, hot day here in California. It is the Earth Master here on the live stream. Uh, it is. What's the date today? June 24th. Almost into July already. Uh, it's about 7.07 .07 p.m. June 24, 2022 on this Friday night. All right, latest, latest earthquake activity shows a 1.2 earthquake up into the area of Alaska. We have seen a little bit of noticeable increase up there, including a 4.1 kicking things up out there on the earthquake 3D globe. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity um, from the USGS map here. Looks like a little activity coming into the Alia permanent station there on the seismograph. We'll get to that here in just a little bit, see if it's anything uh, noteworthy. So up here in Alaska, a little bit of notable, notable movement uh, above the 2.5 threshold. Looks like the USGS has downgraded that 4.1 to a 3.9. Of course, they like to keep it under that threshold. That way, the earthquake doesn't look as big or significant on the map, right? If you overlook this with the all magnitudes map here, kind of see that, hey, doesn't look like any big, any big event going on up there. But there's definitely some not notable quakes going on north of Denali, pushing well inland into about the center part of Alaska. Fairbanks sits over here to the east about 150 miles or so, maybe about 100 miles. And it's kind of out here, this 3.9 struck about 26.1 kilometers below the surface here into this mountain range. Uh, uncertain on the specific fault systems up there. There's definitely a bunch. As always, the North American plate, Pacific plate boundary. A lot of pressure being applied here in this region. Get some large, super large quakes along this area. Uh, not only at the subduction level, but well inland. So it looks like uh, a little bit of activity around the Denali area as well. They've seen a 3. Point, uh, looks like a 3.7. That one is pretty deep, way deep down there. About 129 kilometers along the Denali fault line. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy fault system here that stretches across a good portion of southern Alaska. Some movement up here north here into the Berks Range as well. A couple threes kicking off. So overall activity definitely seen on the increase up here in Alaska. Uh, the notable movement that we've seen across the, uh, the Cocos Plate, the Nazca Plate area, Pacific Plate Boundary, South America region. Remember that? swarm of activity around here looks like it's died off a little bit um haven't really seen too much in the way of uh, further activity uh there was a little bit of movement um 624 that was from uh, that was from earlier this morning so nothing really at all has showed up here in this region recently the only notable earthquakes in, in the uh, afternoon time frame and whatnot are around the Puerto Rico area. And even then, that's not that big of a deal. Got about 11 earthquakes or so around the Puerto Rico area. One up here around the Puerto Rico Trench with a 3.2, about 32 kilometers down there. But uh, things just kind of kind of quiet down here along the South America region for now. Over here along the Antarctica and uh, Pacific Plate boundary, we've got a 5.7 that kicked up. That was from this morning as well. Uh, no further subsequent activity along the Kermadec Trench or the uh, New Zealand area. Looks like uh, some movement over here around the Solomon Islands area north of the Vanuatu area. A couple fours kicking off there uh, throughout the afternoon time frame. Also around the Philippines area and still seeing a little bit of activity up here around Taiwan. Looks like uh, at least a couple of those in the four range uh, over the course of the last 24 hours. Not a whole lot going on throughout the uh, Japan or the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. We got one earthquake in the Russia region with a 4.4 at 375 kilometers down there. That's some deep activity. Of course, remember this deeper activity. Got to remember how, what it's doing up here to the trench regions. We're looking at locked areas getting tighter along the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Over here around the Java Trench, we did have somewhat of a moderate-sized earthquake, a 5.1, although this region here uh, can see some mega quakes. But uh, today, just a 5.1 and a 4.4. 4.4 4 
4.4, the deepest one of that, about 194 kilometers into the Java Trench area. Things kind of dying off throughout the Middle East and also uh, the China region looking pretty quiet up there. One movement earthquake here in the uh, Carlsberg Ridge. That one was from, uh, looks like this afternoon time frame of 4.9 out here around the uh, Carlsberg Ridge area outside of the Ribbian Basin. Low activity also being picked up in the Democratic uh, Republic of the Congo. A 4.4 earthquake coming in there. I think this came in as a 4.9 if I remember right. Uh, either way, a little, little bit of activity kicking up here in this area of the African continent. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet, aside from one 4.8 uh, earlier this afternoon as well. 4.8 in the central mid-Atlantic Ridge. Let's go ahead and check out the states. Looking uh, somewhat active, I suppose, along the west coast. Getting in on uh, some activity along the San Andreas Fault. Also the Ridgecrest area. And uh, Southern California rocking and rolling a little bit down here, just around the border area. Yeah, I've been watching a little bit of swarming going on here over the last couple days. Uh, this is the last seven days of activity. Shows about 18 or 19 earthquakes or so within this region of the Mexican border here. Mostly microquakes. Uh, it is well off the Imperial Fault, well west of the um, this little fault system here. And San Andreas Fault sits up here a little bit, but uh, definitely a ways away. But uh, I think a little overall sign of some impending uh, pressure within the region. Looks like some activity up here around the uh, Cucamonga area, the Cucamonga Canyon. Getting in on a couple earthquakes here, somewhat deep, around 10 kilometers or so. And some scattered activity out and about the rest of Southern California whole bunch of query blast out here around the San Andreas Fault and the, and the uh, Garlock Fault Zone. Not for sure what's going on. Hey, let's blow up some explosives here around this major plate boundary and, and fault systems that are long overdue for a big earthquake. So these are pretty shallow. Notice the negative depths there at a negative 1.2 indicating the shallow explosions. Uh, but a 1.4 query blast and a couple other One's in the mix as well. A little spotty activity through the Ridgecrest area. Long Valley Super Volcano still showing some movement today. Uh, looks about looks like about 14 earthquakes. All again shallow. Negative 2.3 for the last one there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Long Valley Volcano status, which is still green. Mammoth Mountain green as well down here. We'll go ahead and check out where the swarming's occurring. That's kind of roughly around this area of 395. This is the latest, last 24 hours of earthquake activity here at the Long Valley Super Volcano. And looks about right, being reported, that is. I see a number of uh, small earthquakes there. Nothing like we've seen a couple days ago, a few days ago. Uh, but those earthquakes definitely showing up on the graph and they are being reported here by the USGS. A uh, little activity up here in the Antelope Valley region near the Walker, California region, just west here it looks like. A couple small microquakes. Uh, what do we got over here around the San Francisco Bay? It looks like one a smack dab on the San Francisco Zoo. Well, close to the zoo. Uh, San Francisco got a fault system here, plate boundary right. That's the San Andreas Fault, 1.1 at 10 kilometers. So still a little bit of activity kicking up along the plate boundary today. Cobb Mountain region looks very typical for activity. And Pacific Northwest not showing a whole lot of movement throughout the Washington area. Uh, some spotty activity throughout uh, Montana, Yellowstone. The rest of the country looks pretty clear. One lonesome earthquake over here around the New Madrid zone earlier today with a 2.1. Uh, let's see what we got for trimmer count tonight. And 15, woohoo! Big number, not really, <laughs> definitely not a big number. Uh, but it's kind of odd, look at that, they're all kind of split. A little bit down here, a little bit up there. Not a big number whatsoever, folks. So these tremors do come and go. 
Although uh, it's definitely been active here over the last few months in terms of tremor count. Uh, volcanic activity. We'll check out Mount St. Helens tonight and see if we got any uh, unusual movement, any unusual activity there at Mount St. Helens. I had a weird dream last night. Um, I had a dream I was uh, kind of skiing or hiking somewhat around uh, Mount St. Helens, but in my dream, uh, Mount St. Helens was a point, kind of like Mount Fiji or Mount Shasta, you know, the, or Mount Hood, very tall, pointy volcanoes. Mount St. Helens is used to look like that, but you know, since the eruption, uh, it doesn't look like that anymore. But anyway, I had a I had a dream that it started to uh, blow out a whole bunch of smoke and lava when um when I was up there hiking. It was really scary, actually. I was trying to get away from it. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd share my dreams with you. <laughs> or nightmare. One of the two. Hopefully that doesn't come true. Anyway, a little activity around the Mount St. Helens region today. A couple small microquakes. Nothing significant going on, folks, that I can tell. They're at uh, Mount St. Helens. Yellowstone National Park, about the same. Not seeing any major swarms. No major magma movement. No uplifting of the ground. No melting of the roads. We can get roads melt out here in California. The pavement melts. It all depends on what type of uh, mixture gets put down on the dirt, right? The pavement's a little complex when it comes to uh, creating the, the uh, heat-resistant type. So you guys remember the 3.9 out in the um, Georgia area? Uh, what was that about a week ago I think somewhere around there a few days ago but did a little damage over here uh, near Hutchinson Island looks like the ferry dock and the Weston parking gar garage by uh, looks like causing land to settle near the banks of the Savannah River now they use the word settle but this is actually uh, uh, liquefaction that's kind of what happens here when the ground is relatively well it's not stable for one and when you get an earthquake, it kind of shakes the ground and settles everything that's on top of it, kind of like quicksand. And this is only a minor earthquake. Uh, good portions of New York and Manhattan area and other portions along the eastern coast are landfills. You know, they're, they built on landfills and uh, that's not solid rock, not solid ground. So any type of earthquake activity could definitely um, do damage like this. Uh, there's parts of the Bay Area and whatnot that uh, are prone to uh, liquefaction potential. Uh, San Francisco has certain areas, big time. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, around New York and whatnot. So any big earthquake, uh, even a moderate-sized earthquake, can definitely cause some uh, liquefaction errors. I, I say that an error because, you know, that's that's definitely an error, sinking of the land, so to speak. They call it settling settling that's I guess that's a word we can use uh, the technical term is liquefaction takes place when loosely packed waterlogged sediments you know and this is just kind of one uh, at or near the ground surface lose their strength in response to strong ground shaking uh, looks like uh, liquefaction occurring beneath bu buildings and other structures can cause major damage during er during earthquakes a couple of events there back in Japan and the Loma Prieta earthquake back in 1989. Uh, liquefaction of the soils and debris used to fill in a lagoon caused major subsidence, fracturing and horizontal sliding of the ground surface in the Marina District in San Francisco. So, you know, a, a lot of people don't know about all that landfill stuff out there in New York and the Manhattan region built on uh, garbage, <laughs> pretty much, right? People building cities on garbage, goodness. What the, what's, what's, what's going on with this world? I get it, we gotta do something with it, but man, whoo. But anyway, yeah, earthquakes can uh, create events such as this, like we see in the 3.9, not a big earthquake at all. This, this one actually originally came in, let me see here. Not for sure where it's at. I don't know if I have it on here, but originally this earthquake came in as a, oh, there we go, a 4.5. This originally came in as a 4.5 earthquake um, from the USGS near the Stillmore, Georgia area, 4.05 a.m. back on the 18th of June. 
but it did get downgraded to a uh, 3.9 so after some special studies space weather is uh, still having some issues going on with the uh, data system that's coming in nothing has been updated here in the past couple days so uh, looks like it was due to a power outage uh, this is the latest event uh, solar update put out from these folks here at solarham.net it's a pretty cool website that i use to monitor solar weather uh, looks like the solar dynamics observatory better known as sdo is still unavailable so below is an updated look at the visible disc courtesy of uh, a different observatory in the canary islands it looks like notice 3038 they're kind of facing away from us there is a uh looks like let's see what we got here 3040 i guess we could use this one this, this one kind of looks updated 625 utc time uh at zero zero so yeah that's well it's a couple hours old but a lot better than well, i'll say for example uh a few days old like this one that one's definitely off that one's from a few days ago when 3038 was like over here so either way, um, that one's saying bye-bye, and we got 3040 kind of mixing up some stuff, but it's hard to tell like the magnetic fields here when it's in this type of image. So we'll wait for them to uh, hopefully get things going. There is a little bit of amplification right now with the aurora at the higher latitudes, getting a KP index of a, around a 3, uh, and that's expected. It looks like uh, June 25th, June 26th time frame. UTC time so right on Q nothing big coming in but we could see some higher latitudes there around or uh, auroras around the higher latitudes looks like at least a 50% chance there for the folks the lucky folks that are in the dark up there may be able to see that in the sky aside from that folks no major solar flares to report this is the current solar flare chart monitoring the activity and everything looks somewhat stable for now um, from the sunspots that are currently facing earth all right guys hope you have a great friday night uh, again stay safe out there um you know i'm still kind of curious as to what all this activity we've seen on the globe uh, let me bring it up here a little bit around the uh nazca plate the cocos plate pacific plate south america region all seen a swarm of fives uh most of it was last night 5.7 5.8 5.6 all up and down the board here um, but we haven't seen any major large-scale movement uh, following that activity so still watching it sometimes it takes a day or two before things start to make sense like oh that's why because this or that happened exactly so we'll we'll see how it goes folks for now just stay safe out there, and um, we'll definitely catch you guys a little bit later, and enjoy your Friday night. I'm going to go get, you know what, started. I'm going to get the barbecue started, and of course going to post up some video there uh, for the uh, the super fans. Super fans, what are super fans? Super fans are folks that uh, participate in a membership that get to uh, see some behind the scenes stuff, pretty much uh, just some home videos, uh, whether it's me and Missy Mimi's cooking, gardening, gardening, uh, you know, a little, little bit more personal stuff, not earthquake related. A lot of people don't want to know about me. They don't want to know about Missy Mimi's. They don't want to know anything about me at all. And that's fine. But those that do, we offer that option um, to join the channel and, you know, kind of be a part of our family. Uh, we share, we try to share videos when we can, whether it's funny stuff or serious stuff. So uh, tonight uh, we'll post up a little video of our dinner tonight, a little barbecue we're going on, cooking up. Uh, I'm not going to tell you. It'll let it be a surprise. But for those of you that know, um, I definitely like to cook. Uh, I definitely like to cook a lot. That's my choice, my, my barbecue. That's my prized possession, pretty much. But uh, all right, guys, I'll, I'll quit blabbering. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. We will chat you guys a little bit later. If, like I said, if you want to join the membership, it's it's an option there uh, for the channel. You just got to click join and agree to the terms. And, uh, and that's it. If not, 
we'll see you guys back a little bit later tomorrow. Peace out.